going to move on to the story of uh, Musa alayhi salam and Khidr, uh, which will start from ayah number 60. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And mention when Moses said to his servant, I will not cease traveling until I reach the junction of the two seas or continue for a long period. But when they reached the junction between them, they forgot their fish and it took its course into the sea, slipping away. The most interesting thing about this uh, this account of Al Musa is the fact that uh, when we know uh, through the Quran and the Hadith about uh, the life of Musa alayhi salam. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can actually uh, plot all of the major events in his life and have a very chronological order to it. We have just about uh, all of it. Except that this specific event in his life is so uh, strange and conspicuous that this does not really fit in all of those accounts. So no no commentary has ever been given about this event to be placed in a certain chronological uh, point in his mm. life. Mm. So this is a this is a very very strange uh, uh, story when it comes down to uh, uh, historical when it actually happened. Yeah, historical perspective. So that's that's one. Secondly, uh, <clears throat> through the hadith, we know that uh, who was the companion. We also know through the Bible about. Uh, that person, and uh, he later on became a prophet in the in the uh, for Bani Israel, yeah. and this is something which is also uh, a very uh, well. There are no coincidences. So this this uh, this person who who is actually you know uh, the slave of Musa Islam in this story. Yeah, uh, this is uh, the name of this person. Also is. So strangely, uh, uh, the, the, mean, the meaning of his name is also the fish. So this is this is uh, the alphabet noon means the fish in Arabic. So this is this is not something which is uh, you know. Uh, Was it Yusha bin Noon? Yeah. So this is something which is uh, uh, you know not coincidental. Uh, and also the fact that uh, whatever happened, we're going to go into detail now. Uh, this this actual uh, word, hu yeah, is not a, a regular word for the fish. Samaka is the word for the fish in the Quran. Samaka, as well. yeah. yeah. So in this this specific case, hu is is used used, and hu of course is fish, but it is not a. See, this whole surah is so so strange in terms of choice of words that uh, we have to wonder as to why certain words were chosen. Mm. Uh, and we're going to go through the command story and we'll find out that in a lot more detail and diversity. Uh, so that we, we better understand that unless we, we have a very open psychological window, we might not be able to get the, the, the real meaning out of it. Mm-hmm. However, coming to the story, this is something which is uh, uh, narrated in the in the you know in the con- commentary of uh, all of the uh, Mufassirin mm-hmm. who actually talk about how this happened and what was the order given to Musa salam and he did not uh, he could not stop unless of course he really had to he had to travel as far as he could uh, to find that person because he was looking for Khidr al salam mm-hmm. So. Okay. Uh, and so for this, that purpose, he was uh, like instructed by Allah to go keep traveling until he reaches the junction of the two seas. Yeah. Now uh, this this word, uh, <coughs> uh, the two seas, hmm. uh, Bahrain. Hmm. Uh, this is something which is uh, also to be factored in hmm. whether it was just a water reservoir, which is hmm. also you know a lake or or, or hmm. whatever, or it was actually the two seas. Hmm. Because there is no junction of the two seas at that time. Hmm. Uh, now we know the Panama Canal is, uh, hmm. or the Suez Canal, sorry. The Suez Canal is uh, a very later hmm. uh, make of the man. We made that later, hmm. uh, joining the Mediterranean Sea with the, with the, with the Gulf hmm. of uh, Arabia, the Arabian Sea. Before so that, are, you, are you trying to say that before this, there were no... No junction the, of the two seas. So this is not a, the Nowhere sea. in the world. Well, there are, in always is going to be. Of course, yeah. this is, you know, in Argentina, hmm. or in Chile, and uh, in South Africa, there are hmm. there is a junction of the two. But two right seas. now, how do you know, like, what place was this? Like, Middle well, East? 
Yeah, well, wherever he started from, of course, it has to be between Egypt and Palestine, right? Hmm. So, wherever he was going, hmm. uh, you, you know, it's, it's a little too extraordinary for us to actually just try and put him in Cape Town or, or, yeah. or, or, or Chile, yeah. you know? Uh, so, <laughs> this is a travel by, by foot. And uh, it seems as if this is uh, a, a journey with, in, in the Arabian uh, deserts uh, or, 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 you know, close to Egypt. Uh, well, literally inside the the, the, the place where Bani Sail was. Mm. So uh, we don't know. See, that's the that's the best part about the story. We we don't know. Okay. So here in sixty one, Aya, they reached a junction, and uh, they forgot their fish. Uh, yeah. And he says the servant says it took its course into the sea, slipping away. Well, that's a word which I do not know why they use that because most of the the translators do, do not uh, use this word slipping away. Yeah. They uh, Some use burrowing, which actually is the actual meaning, burrowing. Burrowing. burrowing is digging in. Digging. Yeah. And okay. most of them use the word saraba is a tunnel. A tunnel. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. this Sahih International does not use this word because uh, it's keeping it light. Hmm. You know, it's keeping it really light. Uh, so when you look at this word saraba, you'll find out that the meaning actually is making a hole. And you know a tunnel and mm. digging in. So uh, so this fish made a hole in the sea uh, uh, through a tunnel, and it just uh, and, and you know this this is a, it's a bilahu means mm-hmm. means a long enough pathway that it actually went in. It just went straight in to the tunnel. Mm. So it just didn't like, just vanish. Mm. It actually went inside a pathway, mm. and uh, mm. it just went into the sea. Now this is a a literal. Translation of the word, which most of the the, the, the translators. And there was a use. tunnel going into the sea, which the fish yeah. took. Oh, yeah. Also, okay. the fact that we know through hadith that this fish was actually marinated, not only dead but marinated. You know, it was inside a box that they were carrying. He was not carrying a fish in his hand okay, for the yeah. you know hundred mm-hmm. mile journey. Mm-hmm. It was a pack up lunch. Mm-hmm. And then this fish actually took to life. And made up a tunnel and went into the sea. Okay. Now this is not a small account here. Hmm. This is actually we we know that even the Quran is actually referring. <clears throat> it was lunch. They were about to eat the fish. Yeah. You know. So uh, the fact that a yeah, dead fish actually you know comes to life and just makes up a tunnel in the air and just you know goes right in the depth of the water. Yeah. Uh, means many things. First of all, is that there is a place which Musa alayhi salam was told about. Hmm. The, the the actual signs and indicators of that place was was was, was known mm. to him. We will we'll know in the next ayahs because he's okay. going to say that it's exactly where we wanted to go, mm. and uh, that was uh, that was the the sign of uh, mm. uh, uh, that that actual place where the the, the portal actually opens, mm. and uh, this is something which is. Uh, not to be, you know, uh, disconnected with the the story of the people of the cave and everyone, and the story of the end. You'll find out what was the was the was the similarity and reminiscence about all this. However, this is uh, this is something which is uh, when we read again now after this perspective, and uh, it would say that falama <laughs> balaga majma'a bayna ima nasiya. He forgot when they reached the junction between them, they forgot their fish. Yeah. And it took its course into the sea, slipping away. Hmm. You know, this is this is what Sahih International says. Of course, it's, it's not a coherent translation anyway when you read in English. Yeah. Dr. Ghali says burrowing. Okay. Well, that's one. Yeah. Uh, we're getting closer. But uh, there, uh, most of the scholars use the word tunnel. Yeah. Uh, so... <laughs> When we go, uh, we'll just, let's just continue with this because okay. the choice of words is so awesome with this. Uh, whatever these <coughs> two, uh, you know, Musa al Islam and his companion are going to talk about now. Okay. Uh, ayah number 62. When yeah. they had passed further, he said to his assistant, Bring us our meal. We have certainly been exhausted by today's journey. That means the fish was already dead. Hmm. And the servant said, Remember when we were resting by the rock? I forgot the fish. Satan made me forget to pay attention to it, and it must have made its way into the sea. How strange. Al-Bahri Ajaba. So, uh, there's this uh, parallel 
uh, trick of uh, shaitan going on so that he can actually make uh, that place invisible mm. to them. Mm. Uh, see, this is not like a big wooden door or a, you know, a rock formation which shaitan can just, you know, try and uh, distract them from. Yeah. It is something which is like a barrier. Mm. It's just a doorway or a gateway which is in the air mm. uh, or in the ground or, or it's so, you know, it's like a dimensional door. Mm. interdimensional door mm. so shaitan actually wanted them to miss it out and just go keep going further mm. and this is what, the, what what's going on here wow yeah. so uh he said did you see when we re- retired to the rock when we were resting with the rock uh, indeed i forgot the fish and none made me forget except satan yeah which means that uh uh you know it was more of a, an attempt mm. for them to just you know not find that pathway mm. Mm. Because whatever is about to unfold, we'll mm. see why Shaitan would be actually putting it on priority to make, to, make, to distract them. Yeah. So, okay. and, and the other, the, the one more thing about this. Fil Bahri Ajaba. Yeah. Fil Bahri Ajaba is, is, a, is a very peculiar choice of word again. Mm. So, uh, could you read the translation that you have? Because uh, I have Sahih International. Just okay, I have, uh, I read uh, Abdul Halim's already. I'm going to read from Dr. Mustafa Khattab. So, he replied, Do you remember when we rested by the rock? That is when I forgot the fish. None made me forget to mention this except Satan. And the fish made its way into the sea miraculously. Yeah, so miraculously. Hmm. Another clear indicator that it was not an ordinary event. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the rock has to be around the water somewhere. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it was not right on the bank of water. Yeah. Uh, and even if it were on the bank of water, it doesn't mm-hmm. even matter. But there are no rocks uh, inside water they were resting on. It's a natural, you know, uh, they were just traveling and they just rested somewhere. Uh, assuming it was dead <coughs> on the brink of the, 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 the shore, right? Let's mm-hmm. just assume the, mm-hmm. the easiest case scenario. Mm-hmm. Still, a dead fish jumping in, yeah. making a tunnel is, is something which is... And uh, Dr. Ghali says, I forgot the whale. And in brackets, he says, or large fish. <laughs> it's, a, it's a, you know, this is so, why I can't... He I couldn't be carrying a whale. Though. Yeah, they were not carrying a whale. <laughs> but he it says, was, or a large fish. Yeah. <laughs> no, the, the, the regular question anyone would be actually asking right now is that if a fish is going to jump into water, it's actually going to make a tunnel. Every swimmer does that. We actually yeah. call it a tunnel. Yeah. Every swimmer, swimmer knows because I'm a swimmer, so I know that we have to make the short, smallest tunnel to go faster. Yeah. It actually does make a tunnel in water. We, every, every swimmer does that. Mm-hmm. So if it were just a regular fish jumping into it and there's no portal, no nothing like that. Mm-hmm. Then this word ajaba would not come here. Miraculously, yeah. Okay, so that's... But then, can't it still be a miracle when you have a marinated dead fish? Yeah, no, no, fil bahri ajaba. You have yeah. to understand that. Yeah, into the sea in an ajab, strange <laughs> yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A yeah, strange yeah. way. Okay. It's, it's, they didn't say, oh, it just came to life in a strange way. They said, it jumped through that tunnel very, very, very yeah. if weirdly. So the way this fish went into the sea was strange enough that it, is mentioned in the Quran that it was strange. Yes, yes, yes. Otherwise, exactly. they could just say that he, it jumped into the sea. Yeah, and that's the least of the, the extraordinary things which is going to happen. So, the Quran is not emphasizing <coughs> that. Okay. Uh, but, but this is something which is... So, let's just continue. Okay. Okay. Uh, I number 64. Uh, he said, that is what we were seeking. So they both turned back upon their tracks, retracting, retracing them. There you go. Now, now this is which solves everything. What were they seeking? They were seeking that tunnel. Subhanallah. Okay. So Moses, it clicks in his mind. That Naturally, was the point. Yeah. Fish coming to life is not something which they were seeking because <laughs> yeah. he said, give me my dinner. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. If he would say, oh, the fish came to life. Oh, that's exactly what we were seeking. That's not what's going on here. Yeah. He said the fish, when it went into the water, it made a tunnel. And Busa said, that's what we were seeking. Yeah, exactly. And that's what Shaitan made him forget yeah, yeah, at that just point. So, because that's the physical wow. point. That is yeah. so clear here. Yeah. That is yeah. what we were seeking. So, uh, uh, we, uh, plus the, 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 the word Zalika is, 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 a, is a key word here. So, I have to understand this is how, mm. how are we going to look into it. And mm. uh, 
Uh, I mean, it's, it's common sense from here on. You know, two events are happening. One, the uh, the fish come into life. Two, makes a weird tunnel into the, the sea. So after this, the actual wording of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he said, let's, let's eat. And he said, oh, I forgot from the rock. And that I, I just remember now because I just forgot. Yeah. Shaitan made me forget such a big event. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> so uh, I remember that uh, that fish made a tunnel in, 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 you know, and went into the water. And now that you've asked me about the fish, now I remember. Yeah. So as soon as he said that, Musa al-Islam is talking about that, that key that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him that if you find that yeah. tunnel, that tunnel, you are going to... Uh, That's the point where the you're next going to part find of my the story guy, will who's, who's, yeah. you know, yeah, uh, which, 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 why? That's that's the point of the whole journey. Yeah. Okay. So it means Musa knew that something like this is going to happen. No, 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 Some, no, 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 no. Musa knew that something like that is. Or yeah, maybe a there's a door. There's yeah. a door there. Yeah. 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 Or okay. no, no, not just a door. I'm, my mistake. That if you have that sort of a door, these sort of things. Are going to happen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. that's that's what what he meant. Okay. Hmm. Also, so, that you know, these portals and there's, there's another way of actually explaining it. I don't want to miss out on that because it might also get. Uh, I might have to use that angle. That if that kind of a portal, that kind of a, sorry dimension, is uh, there's a gate of that x amount of, uh, x kind of dimension. I'll tell you what x means. Mm -hmm. X kind of dimension will have an X kind of effect here on this planet. Hmm. So if a dead fish comes to life, then the, the dimension where there is no death, that's the doorway we were looking at. Subhanallah. That's the other way of looking at it. It's not just the pathway, but whatever happened to the fish, and that also could be something Musa said, oh, okay, so the dead fish came to life. Okay, that's what we were seeking for. So it's not just a pathway, but the, the, you know, reincarnation of the fish as well. Yeah. Both of those things could be a meaning here. Yeah. But we know, because we know that Khidr al-Islam has this attribute of not dying. Yeah. Right? So if he's in a place where yeah. there is no death, at that, as soon as he's going to open the doorway to that place, you know, uh, whatever you bring in is going to come into life. SubhanAllah. So, so both of these accounts have to be really carefully incorporated here, separately. Yeah, but we cannot negate any one of them. The life mm. of, mm. Uh, you know, the fish coming to life, and also a weird pathway. Okay. So Musa Sam could be referring to either one of them. So that is exactly what we were looking for. So they returned, retracing their footsteps. Then they both found one of our bondmen. Okay, I'm going to read from Mustafa Khattab. They were found there. They found a servant of ours, to whom we had granted mercy from us and enlightened with knowledge of our own. Yeah, Milla Dunna. Milla Dunna means from us, <coughs> from directly. Us. So, now that's something which is uh, a point of debate forever since the 1400 year span of scholars uh, yeah. of what kind of uh, ilm, ilm this is. is that? Yeah, yeah, we have a term, term which is Ilm Milla Dunni. This is the word they use from. Yeah. This is why they call it Ilm Milla Dunni. Yeah, that it is like some ilm that is directly from God. Directly from God. God, yeah. yeah, so this is why they choose this word email Dunni because this word in Surah Kaf is the only word, uh, only time it actually was used for such sort of knowledge. Now, what is that knowledge? We will know in the next ayat. But uh, you have to understand, uh, there are two things that that are are are, are um, uh, to be noted here. Uh, the the word that you know the translators miss here is another time. The second time the translator missed this word, uh, that uh, Allah has granted a special sort of mercy to this hmm. man. Hmm. Okay, Musa is Allah's, another person. You know, uh, we are all under the mercy of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. But when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala speci specifies, yeah, that you know, ataina uh, rahmatan, hmm. this is something which we have literally given as a special. Some there is something else which he is enjoying. Is this person and uh, wa and and he has uh, a knowledge that we've given. Yeah. So this is something which is uh, 
which is, you know, will be better take into account again of, of what's going on and what kind of world is this and what kind of person are we looking at here. We're talking about that, uh, that guide and that is going to take Musa al -Islam and his companion on a journey. Moses said to him, May I follow you, provided that you teach me some of the right guidance you have been taught. Okay, we haven't debated on that person particularly, how he was particularly for the Fizr and how has he been grounded uh, eternal life? Uh, yeah, this is what I'm referring to uh, about uh, special rahim of Allah. Because uh, it's it could be either the knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to mm. which they can actually find out how to not uh, mm. be a part of our mm. world and just keep on traveling from here and there, mm. both interdimensions. Mm. Also, how to, you know, uh, live uh, for as long as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants a person to yeah. and not die a regular death just like this. And also the fact that, uh, you know, he uh, could have access to all sorts of uh, uh, information regarding mm. time and space and future and, uh, you know, the whole whole timeline. Yeah. All of this could be uh, taken as separate uh, entities or accumulatively at the same time. Mm. Okay. So, we know through Hadith that he's Khidr uh, al-Islam. Mm. Uh, also, the scholars are unanimously agreed upon that this is Khidr. Mm. Uh, I was reading this uh, uh, documentary. Uh, uh, commentary on uh, uh, comparative commentaries and the the whole Al Sunnah scholars and Al Tashi scholars were all unanimously giving detailed accounts. Different scholars had different uh, references, but there was no not even a single objection about him not uh, him not being Khizr. Okay. <coughs> so uh, this is something which is uh, uh, again this, the, the name is not mentioned. So and plus it doesn't really matter what his name was. What matters is that there is a certain type of knowledge that this person has, yeah. and he's going to, to display that knowledge, mm. and we'll we'll find that out. So, okay, uh, so may I follow you, provided that you teach me some of the right guidance you have been taught? No, he said, "You certainly cannot be patient enough with me." There you go. There, there, these are very important things here. Very, very important things. What is that entity which causes impatience to humankind? And that singular entity that causes impatience in our psychology develops us uh, is the, the, the constant flow of time. Yeah. If we stop time, hmm. we are never going to be impatient. We only get impatient. We tra get trained on impatience because we know that there is a certain uh, loss of time. Yeah. Uh, so, this person says that the, time, that the kind of place you're coming from is bound by time. So you do not have what it takes to to be to, to be patient enough, enough. for this, because here yeah. where I am, there is no time. Mm. We can you know we we can stop here and you know spend yeah. a thousand years and not do anything and you know uh, <laughs> we won't be able to the we'll, next thousand years. Yeah, we won't be able to feel. And this is one of those uh, things that hadith say about jannah. Mm. You know that you know a person is going to just look at a woman. And he's going he's gonna to keep looking at that woman is, uh, for a thousand years and won't be able to, uh, yeah. you know, uh, uh, get enough of her, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, the point of what I'm trying to make is that when we know that Jannah is timeless hmm. and this person is also in a certain state of timelessness, hmm. naturally he's going to come in uh, to, to with this dialogue that, no, I'm sorry, he just assertively refutes Musa al-Islam. Uh, yeah. means you just don't have it. Yeah. No matter what you say, mm. you just don't have it. Yeah. Uh, it's not in your make. Yeah. You you're from the place where you're you know you're you're constructed through time. Yeah. So everything that your chemistry actually does is not going to be a blood type match for this sort of dimension. Yeah. So you, you know. Blatantly re re refuses uh, this very uh, notion of Musa al-Islam mm -hmm. that if you teach me, I'll, I'll learn and everything. And the first thing Plus that we... another point that if that guy knew the future, so he knew this as well, that this guy is not going to be patient. I know, but he didn't say that you're not going to end up, uh, you're going to mm -hmm. end up uh, being impatient. He said you don't have it. Lan Yeah, yeah, yeah. Means your capability, you just don't have it. 
He's not talking mm. about uh, you know mm. an event mm. that mm. is going to happen because he's going to talk about events later on. Mm. Mm. So, and the first oh. thing that we missed out on here is that uh, this is look at the wording of Musa Islam. He says, "May I follow you on uh, that you you can teach me from whatever you have." That means he in the that was the purpose of the journey. Mm. He was going for this very knowledge. Musa yeah. Islam is literally stating that I've been traveling for this very reason. That's the first thing he's talking about. SubhanAllah. We found you, now can we do this? Because this is something which we know, we've, we've set uh, on, a, on a very long journey for, for, for this. I, I don't want to, you know, see your face and, uh, you know, say hi and hello and everything. I'm not here for dinner. I'm not here for sightseeing. <laughs> I'm here for this knowledge, which we know through the attributes of Musa Islam. He was so yeah. hungry for knowledge that you know, it was one of his, his attributes. We know through Ahadith that Musa al was all about, mm. uh, you know, mm. the thirst of knowledge. So, uh, this is something which is, uh, uh, you know, a, a very clear indicator as to why Musa al uh wanted whatever he wanted and whatever he was saying. So, this is something which uh, which is going to connect later on. So, let's just continue. And it says, Alim uh, Tarushda uh, means right guidance. Uh, in the last ayah? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, yeah. The, the right 66 guidance. 66 yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so then... Uh, yeah, one more thing before we go further mm-hmm. is that uh, considering Musa al-Islam's life and we know what his life is all about and everything. Uh, let's just wonder for one minute here as to whatever is going to happen with uh, Khidr and uh, Musa al-Islam. Assuming that whatever this happen according to what Musa al-Islam wanted, which it didn't because he said, no, you know yeah. what, no more. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's going to stop the journey yeah. away. Yeah. Assuming that Musa al-Islam went through all of that yeah. and then reverse engineering that into the life of Bani Israel and Musa al-Islam, which we know now. Yeah. What was the point? I'm just wondering, you just, to, uh, just, to, to just get a way stronger perspective. What would Musa al-Islam do with this knowledge to the whole journey of, you know, Musa al-Islam and Bani Israel and Firon and, you know, till the end? Imagine this and you'll find out a lot more depth of what, what this sort of technology can do. Because mm. we know now through history, through hindsight, that Musa al-Islam went through a lot of problems, not just the Fir- Firon problems, but post-Firon problems as well through yeah. his own uh, nation. Yeah, nation, yeah. So, what was it that that this kind of uh, technology is going to do to him, yeah. to his his nation? Yeah, considering that this journey took uh, place before, the could be, we don't know that, but definitely yeah. after tour, right? Yeah. So, uh, it did, or maybe not. We don't know. Yeah, we don't know how. How maybe he was, you know, uh, given certain instructions before the Philon event had happened. Yeah, through some vision. Yeah. Uh, or through a dream. I don't know. But most probably, this is way, way past his marriage. Hmm. He's, because the kind of events he was going on, going through the other uh, story, uh, the, the, the old man, which you do not know whether he was a prophet or not, his hmm. father in law. Hmm. Uh, the kind of uh, personality he had, maybe he could have just, you know, hmm. told him to just, because he told him to t- do 10 journeys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Could, this could be one of them. But uh, we don't know that. But that's mm. that's irrelevant. What's relevant is if I know through history of what my grandfather lived like and what mm. kind of problem he had, and then one day I find a book talking about one of his journeys to find out some sort of monument in some cave, yeah. I'll know what he was going to do because I know what mm. my grandfather's life was all about, right? Yeah. So if anyone says, hey, you know, your, guy, your grandfather was, you know, a... a, a Treasure hunter. I was like, no, you know, he was not. I, I know what he was looking for and what he was going to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In the hindsight, I would know now. So we can do the same sort of principle and uh, put the, in, and, and try and see, because we know so much about Musa al-Islam's uh, life and whatever was going on, that if it happened in pre firon or pre madian hmm. or post madian hmm. uh, uh, or post Palestine, Mm. Then we can know different in different uh, ways of uh, what uh, why he wanted to know all of this yeah. stuff. Yeah. Okay, or let's just assume that you know we stop the wandering. Let's just say that Musa Islam just wanted this kind of knowledge. Yeah, 
you know, still the question mark. So what, why would a prophet, you know, because the prophets are all about, you know, the, the, yeah. the whole national interest of the, the world, right? Uh, and their people. So what was, what was, uh, he gonna do with this? This is something which we better, we, we should better, uh, uh, think about. Okay. <clears throat> so he said, you certainly cannot be patient enough with me. How could you be patient in matters beyond your knowledge? Mustafa Khattab says, and how can you be patient with what is beyond your realm of knowledge? There you go. That, that's a way better, better choice of words because yeah. uh, we'll find out why I, I just said that's a better choice of words. So uh, he said, you will find me in case Allah so decides, patient, and I will not disobey you in any command of yours. Uh, Mustafa Khattab says, uh, Moses assured him, you will find me patient, Allah willing, and I will not disobey any of your orders. Yeah, uh, the eye before that, uh, وَكَيْفَ تَصْبِرْ وَكَيْفَ تَصْبِرْ uh, and then it continues, مَا لَمْ تُحِطْ مَا لَمْ تُحِطْ means uh, the scope. The scope, is, it's, not, it's not in your scope. Yeah. Patience is not even in, in you because the, the knowledge that you have of uh, the, uh, the, the things that you know about, the things that you know about, they do not yeah. have that kind of scoping. Uh, so you'll, uh, you'll, you'll react. Yeah. Because I know the scope, that means yeah. the whole realm that you come from, that sort of thing, does this, what I'm about to do does not fit in the rationale. Rationale. The yeah. scope is the rationale, right? Yeah. Yeah. So he's saying that, uh, malam tohit means, I know the capability of the realm, the rationale setting that you, you guys do in your dimension. Yeah. This is something which is going to be so wrong. Yeah. This is exactly what Musa al-Islam was objecting to. Wow. So he said, my rights and my wrongs Can are I beyond fit? your scope because your rationale yeah. is on a totally different principle of judgment. Yeah. In a three-dimensional world. Well, no, no, it's not the physics yeah. here. It, mm. This is, this is, this is uh, philosophy. Yeah. This is philosophy he's talking about. That whatever ra your rationale is, is based on a, in a single line morality, judgment of morality, right? Yeah. And that morality, Creates a certain scope of what can be wrong, you know, the extrapolation, the jurisprudence, yeah, you know, yeah. the whole, the whole legal system that your mind can create. Yeah, that's the 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 the, the you know the the scope. Yeah. The hit means the scope. Hmm. You know, this is as far as you can think. Hmm. So he said, "Malam to hit means uh, I'm beyond whatever you can think. You do not have it in your scoping. So my instrument of morality is different." Wow. Even though his instrument of morality later on turned out to be our instrument of morality. That's okay. Yeah. But he, the way he did it, yeah. he said that my instrument of morality is so big yeah. that your instrument of morality is so small that, you know, malam to hit, that your scope is not as big as mine. Yeah. So what you'll think of what I'm going to do is absolutely wrong, even though I will be doing something absolutely right. Yeah. SubhanAllah. You know what I'm saying? So this is something which is, which is, uh, so important to, for us to understand because, uh, Musa al -Islam, we'll find out in the next verses because Musa al -Islam is kept on complaining as to, you know, you did zulm, 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 this is zulm. <laughs> yeah. Because this instrument of, and this is a prophet we're talking about here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We, we can't even comprehend as to what kind of knowledge Musa al -Islam had. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and still he couldn't gather up enough, uh, scope of, of knowledge as to why this <laughs> to guy justify doing this. what he was doing. Yeah. To his own brain. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And you yeah. know, nobody else sent him but God, right? Yeah. So if I am sent by God to some place with, to meet somebody by God. Yeah. And this guy is doing something, some magic tricks here and there. I won't be like, Hey, this is wrong, right? Exactly. I'd right? be like, oh my God, wondrous, wondrous, man. This yeah. is wondrous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I because know that God, the, the, yeah, the God sent me so to he you. must be right, yeah. So this is not something, and the, the guy's before even doing his, his tricks, he's going to be like, no, you don't have what it takes, man. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I'd be like, oh my God, this is, this is something which is, uh, you know, 
because uh, when I read this every single time I go through this, I'm still going through this, these, these goosebumps as to what was the, the this is the trifactor here. God, Khidr al Islam, and Musa al Islam. You know what I'm saying? This is a trifactor. Yeah. And Musa al Islam is in a certain realm yeah. of knowledge and rationale and psychology and philosophy. And Khidr al Islam is in a totally different philosophy. Yeah. Even though the course of philosophy set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so it's right all, all across. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So let's just put that to a test so that you guys would know what I'm talking about. If a guy who is being tried for murder comes in and says, you know what, I killed this little kid because I knew, knew that this kid is going to turn out to be a murderer yeah. and uh, he's going to kill a million people. Yeah. You know, a Muslim Holocaust sort of thing. Yeah. So I kill him. Uh, and. No way. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. And he does show us the real of how that was going to happen. He yeah. still would be punished yeah. according to the rule of Islam yeah. for murder and yeah. he will be killed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This, yeah. this, this is a rationale. Yeah. You have to understand what I'm talking about. This is, this is, this goes deeper. Okay, so if I say hey, this is the future, this is the future, I'm going to open a portal right now and look at what I, I did. I saved so many people by killing this guy. Even if the judge believes me that this portal is true and whatever, you know, I'm showing, hmm. I still should be punished by death for yeah. killing a, a person who has not committed a crime. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, this is the, you know, such a magnificent event that is about to unfold here. So we can't just casually just wing it and just, you know, uh, whiz through these ayahs and yeah. not not go into detail yeah. about what this is going on. And, <clears throat> and this is a non-profit, we're talk, uh, no profit, we're talk, a non-profit we're talking yeah. about. This guy <laughs> is a, 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 a regular person which is Khidr. under the rahmah yeah. of Allah directly and getting a a certain type of knowledge, hmm. which is, uh, uh, you know, which is not even comprehensible by by us mere yeah. mere mortals of this dimension, <laughs> mere mortals literally, because yeah. this guy is immortal. Okay. And how can you be patient with what is beyond your realm of knowledge? He said, Moses assured him, you will find me patient, Allah willing, and I will not disobey any of your orders. He responded, then if you follow me, do not question me about anything. Until I myself clarify it for you. Yeah, the word inshallah is a keyword here, okay? So just don't uh, take it lightly. Uh, so uh, he said, and if you follow me, then do not ask me about anything until I make you uh, a mention about this. Okay, so. Uh, uh, let's uh, go on because this is something which is yeah about anything a rule. I myself clarify it it's for a rule. You. So they set out, but after they had boarded a ship, the man made a hole in it. Moses protested, "Have you done this to drown its people? You have certainly done a terrible thing." Spoken like a true prophet. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Amar bin Maluf wa Nayyan al Munkar. You know this guy. <laughs> Is uh, yeah. doing whatever a prophet would do. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so he replied, did I not tell you that you would never be able to bear with me patiently? He said, do not take me to, uh, uh, to task that I forgot, nor oppress me with a command too difficult for me. Uh, Mustafa Khattab says, Moses pleaded, excuse me for forgetting and do not be hard on me. Yeah, one thing I always have wondered, even since ever since I was a kid, that uh, you know, in the in the narration of the hadith, the first indicator of a uh, ravi is the fact that his God has to have an excellent memory. The first time I was what yeah. sixteen, fifteen, hmm. that uh, my teacher told me that you know, uh, even if a sahabi used to say, "Now where are my keys," and somebody says, "Yeah, you know what? I remember him forgetting his keys." Yeah. This guy is not going to be put in the books of Ahadith. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then. Uh, this certainly is the rule. Yeah, rule that's the rule. And then. Uh, yeah. Is the ayah. Yeah. The Prophet yeah. was afraid that how am I going to remember yeah. all of this? I should yeah. write it down. He said, Allah says, 
فلا تنسى الا ما شاء الله اوكي سو يو هاف تو انڈرسٹینڈ وین ا راوی کین ایون فرگیٹ وٹ پاکٹ ڈز ہی پٹ ہز کیز آن ان ان ایم سینگ ہی ہیز ٹو ہیو امپیکیبل امپیکیبل میموری اینڈ دس از اے پروفٹ وی ٹاک موز فرگیٹنگ اوور اینڈ اوور اگین ا اسٹیٹمنٹ وچ جسٹ گیو ٹوئنٹی منٹس اگو یا ایم ایم سینگ نسیت نسیت three times this word nasit yeah. and the companion of the prophet also forgets nasit the fish and he yeah. says oh, uh, shaitan must have made me forget because i don't forget yeah. yeah another prophet is saying yeah. this word is coming up over and over again i'm thinking why are these guys forgetting all this <coughs> so suddenly wow you know so that means that means very clearly that they're not an ordinary realm yeah they're not in an ordinary realm and this this is something else going on and they're they're just uh not adhering to the the climate of that place really well and i'm not talking about physical climate i'm talking about the the mental climate which actually comes into uh yeah. coming into the dimension maybe they're which you, you generally happens yeah overwhelmed yeah. or too lost or too focused on certain things yeah Well, no, they cannot be because uh, yeah. they have to be full. I mean, and this is something which is, uh, you know... Uh, like we know that any hyperbrain activity will make yeah. you forget certain things. Well, I personally, purposely, I'm not going to wow. the psychology of things here. I'm just talking about well, uh, the physiology of things. I am only going to the psychology here. But when this word says, Nasit, Nasit, coming over and over again, I was always thinking that, why are you going so hard on the Sahabas for forgetting anything when the Prophet <laughs> can forget stuff? Yeah. you know which is a uh, which is uh, a rule in this uh, dimension not in the other dimension you yeah. know, these people are in the other dimension yeah. now okay so forgive me for forgetting do not make it too hard for me to follow you uh, so they proceeded until they came across a boy and the man killed him moses protested protested have you killed an innocent soul who killed no one you have suddenly done a horrible thing okay He yeah. replied, did I not tell you that you would never be able to bear with me patiently? Moses replied, if I ever question you about anything after this, then do not keep me in your company. For by then I would have given you enough of an excuse. Yes. So they moved on until they came to the people of a town. They asked them for food, but the people refused to give them hospitality. There they found a wall ready to collapse. So the man set it right. Moses protested. If you wanted, you could have demanded a fee for this. So, uh, he replied, this is the parting of our ways. <laughs> I will Hold on, explain before, before, to you. Before that, uh, let's just uh, do uh, 87, 87 again. So they said, uh, uh, we're not going into detail or detail of everything because we, I'm going yeah. to summarize the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. Bukhidan is, himself is going to summarize the whole thing later yeah. on. So we're yeah. not going to do ayah by ayah in this one. But this is, a, this is a critical point here. So when they set out until when they came to the people of town, they asked its people for food. Hmm. That means Khidr al-Islam, who does not die, hmm. you know what I'm saying? Musa al-Islam is not... uh more getting the attributes of khidr al-islam in the, just because he's in that dimension hmm. you have to understand that hmm. he still is getting hungry hmm. and demanding food this is this is this is this is something which we better take into account hmm. uh and and that means that you know the natural metabolic activity is going on there physically in the in this very ship this is not a a, a, a hocus pocus land This is so, not a spiritual journey. Wait, wait, wait. So you say like they are in another dimension? Yeah. Right now? So they come to this place where like it's a town? Yeah. So this whole town is in another dimension? All of this, yeah. Okay. So in that dimension, wherever they are traveling, uh, they come to this town. Okay. Yeah. Right. This whole town is in another dimension. Okay. Yeah. No, all of this is going to happen in the other dimensions. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, is it just like we have jinns exactly at the same place but oh, no, 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 no. in no, another no, dimension. I know I know what you mean. No, 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 no. These three people hmm. are going through, you know, uh they are in the planet of human beings. Yeah. But the way they're actually interacting with everything, you know, mm-hmm. the journey and everything, mm-hmm. 
this this is a, a totally different dimension mm -hmm. in other words uh, when they uh, set out from uh, a water place mm -hmm. uh, that they, they come to this planet mm -hmm. but then they come to the other city they go through the you know the, the same kind of doorways okay okay so, so they are in this planet mm -hmm. but they're traveling through a totally different dimension mm -hmm. okay i was just thinking like just like the jinns they are at the same place but in another dimension yeah yeah uh so i, I just thought like no 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 something this, like that uh, yeah, no no not okay. at all well could be evil all along but, but you know let's just keep them all in planet mm. earth mm. and then you know make these three people walk through those doors which the fish mm. travel through mm. Mm. okay so uh so he he sets the wall uh, straight and uh, he says that you could have asked for a fee for this yeah and uh, he replied this is the parting of our ways i will explain to you what you could not bear patiently <laughs> the boat belonged to some needy people who made their living from the sea and i damaged it because i knew that coming after them was a king who was seizing everything serviceable every serviceable boat by force okay uh, i'm going to read from mustafa khatab sorry Uh, as for the ship, it belonged to some poor people working at sea, so I intended to damage it, for there was a tyrant king ahead of them who seizes every good ship by force. And as for the boy, his parents were true believers, and we feared that he would pressure them into defiance and disbelief. Hmm. So we hoped that their lord would give them another, more virtuous and caring in his place. Yeah. And as for the wall it belonged to two orphan boys in the city and under the wall was a treasure that belonged to them and their father had been a righteous man so your lord willed that these children should come of age and retrieve their treasure as a mercy from their lord I did not do it all on my own this is the explanation of what you could not bear patiently Yeah so uh, well all three accounts are against zulm yeah and uh even though khidr al-islam was saving uh, the 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 people against zulm but it did it seemed to musa al-islam that he is committing zulm mm. so this is a you know a, a, a more of a training program going yeah. on to of how uh our current logic does not really suffice yeah. for uh the 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 bigger lo plan of logic and the way logic is treated in uh, so in 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 the you know yeah. in the bigger what's the word orchestra yeah well subhanallah like it's a very common question that if god loves us why is there so much suffering in dunya and all these kind of things yeah yeah like Because everything things, every single thing on our, every yeah. single thing now since the story of musa al islam is over so let's just come and let's just do a summary on this okay the summary is very clear there is a very clear uh, rationale that we all believe in Mm. Uh, everybody believes in whether mm. he's a muslim non muslim we call it morality and we test everything on morality and you know mm. the word justice comes into play when we we try and balance that morality mm. uh so this is something which is uh which is uh in this in this story we know that if we try and explain allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's planning in the grand plan to our concept of logic and rationale it is not uh, going to suffice for any sort of answers which mm. when we look at the grand plan in play at individual level and at a global level mm. uh so the plan of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the justice the concept of justice in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is for the billions and billions of people and everything not just uh, human beings but all 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 creation so when we actually start to question uh of why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing this and that and so much so that we, if 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 an event does not fit our rationale we start uh, questioning and then rejecting the very concept of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hence atheism yeah yeah hence atheism hence uh, antagonism hence rebellion hence uh, irritation hence dissonance so on so forth yeah so This is a very clear lesson. That's the first lesson we get that uh, if a prophet can't grasp that concept, yeah, then uh, we for sure cannot because prophets are at a totally different hierarchy of knowledge and competence at the same time. 
Yeah. So, like even uh, Muslims, like uh, believing Muslims, when they they go through a certain suffering, even they are sometimes saying that, "Why did God do this to me? Why me?" Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, before we actually uh, go to the next lesson, first thing first be before we before we do, go into any sort of conclusions or, or opinions, when the Prophet used to be quiet at something or uh, say something or or do something, it becomes a sunnah. Yeah. And a lot of times, Muslims also use a lot of things which Prophet uh, let happen in, uh, in front of him or made to happen or did it himself, becomes a lesson for everyone in the Ummah till Qiyamah. So, we can't just start jumping into a straight up conclusion that, oh, Musa Islam did not have the sabr, Musa Islam did not have the sabr. Musa Islam could be on a totally different and even a higher scaffolding of the hierarchy than even Khidr al-Islam. Mm. And he was doing it so that the people till Qayyama can learn. And that's the sunnah of every prophet. Yeah. They make a lot of things happen in front of them and they go very normal even though they know uh, and we have so many uh, hadith about this and sunnah about this that why did the Prophet do this? <clears throat> we now know that, you know, he did it so that we can get an allowance on, and learning out of this. Yeah. So, for example, if, uh, if the woman comes to the Prophet and says, I have two proposals and I'm just looking into, I need your advice. Yeah. The Prophet said, uh, who and who? And uh, she said, uh, Mahavi and Abu Darda. Yeah. And Prophet said, Mahavi is uh, uh, hand to mouth. He won't be able to support you. And uh, Abu Darda, does not uh, let the stick off his shoulder. Yeah. So in this case, the Prophet literally was telling us that if there is uh, an account of marriage, you have to narrate everything what you know about the, the proposal, the man or the woman, so that yeah. you can save your your brother from yeah. any sort. Otherwise, uh, any sort of information yeah. that you're going to give is going to be termed as riba. Yeah. And riba is a is a sin. Major sin. Yeah. yeah. But we know that Prophet, even if they did ghibat, even yeah, if yeah. that does he does not fit that that bill. You know, he's yeah. saying it for the Ummah. We know yeah, that. That's our yeah. common sense. Yeah. yeah. This is for the Ummah. But yeah. in this case, there's another lesson. Yeah. That in this specific case, you have to narrate because Tohmat and Ghibat are totally two totally different things. Yeah. Yeah. So Tohmat is never allowed. But Ghiba is definitely going to be uh, a, a, a stipulation that, you know, if a business deal is about to happen, you have to tell it. You know, tell. this guy is, uh, you know, he's got uh, some red flags, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Or in this case, he narrated the, the, the two yeah. attributes of these people that you want yeah. my advice. Here you go. You ask for advice. Yeah. I'm going to give you advice. Yeah. Otherwise, he would not have volunteered of narrating Mahavir's yeah. uh, plight or uh, Abu Darda's, uh, uh, you know, personality to the whole world. Yeah. So, in this very case... Using the same template and instrument, he yeah. put this on Musa Islam, and you know he becomes way more superior than Khizr. Yeah. Even though Khizr said, "Yeah, you know, you know what? You don't have any taste." Musa, like, you know what? I'm trying to train the last person who came, <laughs> man. So I'm yeah. going to do whatever uh, a, 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 yeah. a Muslim is supposed to say. Yeah. Supposed to say that why did you kill this guy? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you just flip, turn the tables around. And then you'll find yeah. out that, uh, you know, Musa Islam comes out as the winner, as you know what, the bigger yeah. lesson is not yeah. just for me, man. Yeah. It's for the billions and trillions of people that are going to come in. Yeah. And they're going to learn that, you know, if you see this, yeah. you have to stop it. Yeah. Since I am actually told to let this happen. Yeah. And we all think that, uh, you know, uh, you know, I'm just saying, I'm giving you an angle here. Yeah. Because it's a prophet we're talking about. If I did not have the hadith of the Prophet Islam, about Musa Islam, that if Musa had waited for a little more, we could have gotten a lot more knowledge out of this guy. You know, but that doesn't mean that Musa Islam did not have the sabr. Prophet Islam also is saying that if Musa had kept his plan going on, you know, yeah. for four more accounts, we could have gotten seven more accounts, because right? three yeah. will already we have. Yeah. So, uh, we, we'll, we'll have to uh, be really clear. Otherwise, I know a lot of Muslims just keep on blabbering so disgraceful things about Musa al-Islam that you know what look at this this he he could not why am I supposed to be patient if Musa is not patient I know yeah. I heard this debate I'm like you don't even know the half of it man yeah he was as patient as you can possibly imagine patience yeah. Yeah. he is actually setting a precedence for for all of us yeah 
and so on. Uh, so, coming back to the, the, uh, the, the, the obvious lessons uh, is that uh, the first thing is that uh, the biggest, biggest thing to, to, to learn from this is uh, the adjustment yeah. Khidr al-Islam is doing. Yeah. And uh, understand we're doing a Dajjal perspective here. The biggest lesson that I actually got out, out of this is the fact that when Prophet said nobody can kill a Dajjal. Hmm. Nobody can kill a Dajjal. That means only a prophet is going to come and kill the child. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, we'll, 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 when Khidr al-Islam is, you know, in a place where, you know, he's, he's not going to die, that means that, you know, this is a, some sort of uh, technology the Jal could possibly have. You know, because this mm. man certainly is traveling through portals, that's for sure. Yeah. That means he can only be killed inside his portal or he gets pulled into this side of the, 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 the planet. Hmm. And that also is connected to the hadith that the last day of the Jal is going to be the single day of the planet. That means he's back in this portal, uh, this, this dimension. This dimension, our dimension. Yeah. So, as soon as he's going to come into our dimension, he's going to be killed. Yeah. Otherwise, in the dimension he is in, he cannot be killed. You know, that's, hmm. that's one. Secondly, uh, when, uh, when we know that uh, uh, Khidr al-Islam is uh, adjusting different things, mm. we know that uh, he's traveling through time because mm. he's, he's in a timelessness, a state of mm. timelessness. Mm. He can see clearly he's come back from the future yeah. in, in, our, our, in our perspective, yeah. even yeah. though there is no future present in wherever yeah. he is. Yeah. He's just looking at that boy going up and causing a burden to his uh, yeah. believer parents, so he kills him. Yeah. Uh, boy goes to heaven, parents go to heaven. Because yeah. that boy is just a boy. He didn't commit yeah. that sin. So, yeah. you know, and the hadith says, you know, the thing that you are, the sin that you have not committed will not be punished, even though you yeah. wanted to. Yeah. And the uh, sawab that you wanted to commit, you didn't commit, you will be Still given be credit to because you yeah. wanted to. So, this is something which we know that the, the balance was done perfectly. The boy goes to heaven and the, the believers don't get burdened. Yeah. So, that's an adjustment he just did yeah. to knowing the future. Yeah, yeah. Even if you're not traveling, you can, you can just see it from wherever he's seeing it. Yeah. Another aspect of time travel. And uh, uh, all three accounts were from the future and were mended in the present. Yeah. The wall, the ship and the child. Yeah. So, th this is the second story uh, after the uh, Ashab Kaf, which is uh, narrating uh, a trajectory of time. And even if we do not say trajectory, we can still say time, the concept of time. Yeah. And uh, the second uh, similarity between Ashab Kaf and this is the fact that they entered into a certain hole, yeah. which is a cave. And... Yeah. Uh, the fish entered and Musa al-Islam entered that very place yeah. and went into a timelessness state. Mm. Yeah. So, the third thing is uh, the fish coming to life, which is something which is uh, the Jal is going to be doing all the time. Yeah. So, when he's going to be putting dead people back into life, he has to be opening similar sort of doorways where, uh, wow. where, where you know, uh, or, or whatever happens of if we are in, in that sort of a vicinity. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, there are a lot of places where, where, you know, where you can actually utilize this sort of things, uh, this sort of concepts. And you can see that, you know, a lot of things are, are pretty, pretty, you know, similar. Uh, but uh, that's, you know, that's something which is, uh, um, which is a little too extraordinary for us just to just you know, look over and just, you know, just uh, look the other way. We have to keep into account all of these things and I'm going to keep referring to Musa and Khidr's story later on as well because as, inshallah. As, inshallah, because it has a lot of uh, implications in the in the time of Dajjal and uh, uh, for all I know, uh, whatever ilm Khidr al-Islam had from regular means, hmm. uh, Dajjal got it from irregular means and you know, he's living hmm. in the same place, sort of places or same sort of dimensions. Hmm. And uh, this is why he's meeting with Tamim with Dari hmm. and, and uh, he's still yeah. going to come at the end of time. Sounds a lot like the technology Khidr al-Islam has because he's been around for, 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 for eternity. And uh, the Shia text, hmm. 
puts uh, Khidr al-Islam <coughs> and Zulkarnain as uh, first cousins. Wow. Yeah. And uh, they also put the story of the fish somehow. Not Musa al-Islam's fish. They actually have a story, which I don't really, you know, uh, refer to because even they call it uh, a weak narration. But the concept is still there. Mm-hmm. Azul Karnan, first cousin was uh, Khizr al-Islam. And uh, he gave a uh, hundred fish, one to everybody, uh, uh, peop- uh, a group of hundred people to find the source of life, which is in some water, in some well on, on this planet. Wow. So they all went on a journey. And they all found the place, which is in, which they say is the North Pole. And they saw 100 wells, but only one of them well, uh, wells was uh, the, the water of life. Mm. But Khizr al-Islam had forgotten his fish somewhere. You know, that's what they have written. Mm. And uh, everybody threw his fish in his well. well Khizr al-Islam did not have a fish, so, but he had to you know, give a report back yeah. to the, the, the king. So he jumped into the well himself. And wow. since he's the guy who actually was uh, at the well of what life, life well. <laughs> so he actually, you know, got, got the gift. Drink it. Yeah. And what they say is that it's in the North Pole. Mm-hmm. And uh, which science also says that the Ice Age actually covered all those, you know, the world with ice, even though the first source of water is in the ice uh, glaciers of the North Pole, mm-hmm. source of life which is not a Shia or a Sunni text. This is a totally science. different science mm-hmm. that they're actually, you know, going into that, you know, the whole source of original uh, fresh water to which all the life came about to evolution was was frozen into the North Pole, wow. which is a little too co- coincidental. I don't know. I don't know. Be Could be. Uh, but even if we do do put Khidr Islam as a cousin of Zulkarnain, even if we do, mm. don't really change anything because uh, yeah. uh, Khidr Islam is going to have that eternal past anyway. So he's going to move Musa later on. Uh, however, this does connect Khidr Islam, uh, sorry, Musa Islam with Zulkarnain to meeting the mm. same guy. Yeah. And the uh, concept of fish. And yeah. then calling this guy Yashur bin Noon uh, from uh, the word fish. And then, mm. you know, so on and so forth could be anything. And the thing to ponder upon here is that, but whatever the choice of words in the Quran is, yeah. the story is true. Yeah. Whatever happened is true. And uh, the obvious lessons for everybody to be used in time of the Jal are also very clear right there. Uh, and yeah. we, we can't just uh, take it casually. So, again, a little bit more detail coming up in the next ayahs about Shaddha okay. Islam, inshallah, because uh, the concept itself has to be invoked a lot, a lot of times. And that concept is called uh, adjustments through time. And uh, there are people like Hidr al-Islam, or even if he's alone and he's got copies of him, or maybe he's the one who's, since he's in timelessness, so why does he need copies? He can just, you know, fix any yeah. time, anything, yeah. and just, you know, yeah. because he has the time to make it back yeah. in time. So uh, he's adjusting everything which is going on and uh, could be uh, could be a million people going on wrong. So just don't disregard the Sufiyas and Sufism just like that. Mm-hmm. I'm not a follower, but you can't just disregard it mm-hmm. uh, because they actually literally claim it that you know this is how it works. Okay, so 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 it, that's how it works. Doesn't matter what what you know what you believe. What matters is what is the use of all of this yeah. in the time of the job. So see, Sufis and you know, Sufism is not our topic. We're not going to go in that detail. But the job, we are going in a lot of detail. So this is why uh, Khidr. And the place where he lives or the way we can actually go and see this sorrow place is something right there in the Quran. And uh, this is why I just keep on saying that, uh, uh, you know, uh, in the time of uh, the Jal when we'll be heading towards the mountains, might not be such a bad idea just to go towards where the two seas are meeting. <laughs> you know, <laughs> for people who are in any way in that kind of vicinity with, you know, Bahrain. Uh, yeah. they can enjoy two different seas and they can actually go into, uh, or maybe that's exactly where the, uh, cause uh, the hadith is that, uh, the throne of shaitan is upon waters. Waters, yeah. And, uh, could be, 
could be the fact that you know this is how these and things the are. And the Mindaris hadith also say that they were traveling through the water. Waters. Yeah, through water. That's an excellent point. <clears throat> That's also the Jal also was in an island somewhere on the on on on, on some long lost water. Yeah. So personally, if you ask me, I also I've always believed that you know this whole universe is all water, which is hadith. Mm-hmm. And the portals actually work just like the on the principles of liquids, not in the principles of gas that we actually think. Well, certainly not in the principles of solids. So it is something which is uh, liquid or liquidy, mm-hmm. and that's why you know every heavenly body is actually swimming. That's the word Allah Subhanahu wa Taala used. Yeah. So even on the planet, when we actually look into different, uh, uh, you know, these sort of events. we have to understand that the psychology of water even uh scientists now give all the examples of the gravity and the causes of gravity just like the water they give the example through the water and they say the fabric of the space time is acts exactly like, like water. water like water yes and it's not h2o but it is water yeah uh in we'll have to really change or alter our psychology to understand these sort of perspectives yeah the dark matter and yeah yeah uh, cuz ayn in hamiya is also water I have to understand yeah. that ayn is also water yeah so what kind of water you know uh, this is uh, we're going to cover that later on the, the cuz ayn in hamiya is coming up is ulkarna yeah inshallah. so water is water water everywhere you know yeah it's um, there's a reason why the word hutimah uh the the fish huta huma huma oh, sorry yeah huta huma and the concept of fish comes yeah. in so many times yeah it's uh it could be water uh could literally be you know that sort of a, a water from that dimension that is actually an invisible thing that is something that we flow in uh through every single day that we don't even realize yeah cuz fish you know a professor of <laughs> philosophy once said that fish do not call water water they call it air <laughs> you know yeah i mean that's an amazing way of looking at yeah. this yeah yeah we call it water because we can't breathe in this yeah uh, so they call our air water yeah you know, so how you can breathe, breathe here. Yeah. yeah wow so this is a very interesting very interesting concept of philosophy that you know fish don't wa- call water water they call yeah. it air so you know why are we calling this air air we can why can't we just call this water yeah and treat it as water and see that yeah. allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling it water and every heaven is you know separated by water yeah uh, and the takht of allah the arsh of allah is sitting on water yeah so yeah. you know this is uh, plus uh, on the uh, hadith of miraj the Prophetism said that I saw Sidratul Muntaha and uh, through the the roots of that tree, roots of the tree, two rivers are flowing. Which is one is Nile and the other is Farat. So, you know, that's the literal yeah. name of the same seas. Yeah, same seas. So, you know, it's a uh, it's, it's something weird. And Nile actually goes through the the lands of Musa Al Islam, yeah. and it's one of the only rivers, two rivers that flow in the exact opposite direction of all the other rivers in the world. Yeah. Nile flows from south to north. Yeah. This is not a coincidence. There are no coincidences yeah. here. Yeah. So uh, that that would river wow. is coming through the source of Sidratul Muntaha, you know? So yeah. how do we fix that? We fix it through a very simple mechanism that that source yeah. of water is connected to this very sort of tunnel. Tunnel. Portal. And that tunnel, yeah. yeah, that tunnel is like opens up in there right here. Yeah. You know? Wow. So it's it's something which we and there are two rivers you know it's not just one you know two bahars meeting yeah uh sidratul so yeah. it's it's a uh, it's 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 a lot to digest i know but yeah. uh, we we that's why we're doing a detailed session so we can talk about every perspective that we possibly have and through the hadith and the quran that's so much. it is something which we better uh, you know take into account before we go into the next uh, series of ayahs